Okay, yes, we're just jumping right into it today because that is how we roll. Actually, it's because we're doing this while we're driving. Today, a little bit of a drive time because um, I, I always love to try to get every opportunity that we can to connect and to talk about everything that God puts on our hearts and our spirits. So greetings. Once again, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus, I greet you in that name that is above every other name, in the name of Jesus Christ. Every knee bows, every tongue confesses, because He, the Lord Jesus, is indeed Lord. You know, there's a reason that so many times when we start to talk, I, God's had me start that way. It's because we have to set the the foundation of who we are. We have to continue to bring into remembrance, to counteract the propaganda of the world and the world system, to counteract the, um, the just the drudgery that's thrown at the people of God continually, to try to make them believe a lie, to try to make them uh, believe something else. Because, you know, once, if you start believing the lie, you start creating, and the creative power that's been put in you by the Spirit of the living God, you start creating that lie in your own life. So if you start believing that you have no power, then you start creating a reality where you have no power. If you start believing um, the propaganda of the world that you can't make a difference, then you stop trying. And then, you, you see what I'm saying? The world, now the world in and of itself, and the world system in and of itself, has no power, has no ability, has nothing. It can't create anything. It can't grow a blade of grass without God having given the uh, that in the first place. They can modify and change and twist and turn God's creation, but they don't have the creative power in them to begin with. So that is, that is something that belongs to God and belongs to the people of God, because the people of God that are made and formed and fashioned in His image, that are connected to the source of life, have life in them, and out of them comes living creations, comes living things. Out of the world comes nothing but death. Out of the world and the world system, which steals and kills and destroys, that's all they're able to create is destruction. Have you noticed that so many of the things that the world, um, the world pushes and rewards and promotes are the things that destroy the lives of other people, that steal from the lives of other people? Have you noticed that? Have you noticed how big of a business war is? Have you noticed how big of a business human trafficking is? Have you noticed how big of a, of a business uh, the drug trade is. Have you noticed all these different things <clears throat> that destroy the lives of people and how the world rewards those things? Whereas if you try to create something, if you try to create something that's honest and good and with integrity and builds how much of a, a just, you know, <laughs> how much of a labor that is. Because you know what? It's it's, it takes time to build. It takes time to grow something. You know, recently I started um, doing a little bit more, I guess, a little bit more gardening in my spare time. And, you know, it takes a little bit to grow things. But you can cut something down in seconds. You can, you can slice something down in seconds, but it takes time to grow. It takes time to develop something. It takes time to... to something to take root and to germinate and to, to come up and to establish itself and then to, to push forward and to finally be able to bear, to flower and to bear fruit. So that is all part and parcel of the process of growth. That doesn't just happen. But to steal, to kill, and to destroy, that can happen very quickly. You know, you can, you can go forward into a time of destruction very fast. And, you know, there's, there's, that is, that is there and that's always looming. I mean, somebody's life can be destroyed in an instant. You know, somebody's youth can be destroyed in an instant. Somebody's innocence can be destroyed very quickly. 
You know, the world tries to do that. That is the, the, the hallmark of the system. <clears throat> so now as God has been moving forward with his own agenda, as his kingdom is coming, as his will is being done on the earth, as we are praying and aligning ourselves for those that have believed and are persuaded and know the voice of the God they serve, know who they are in Christ, have not believed the lie, have not believed the propaganda. You took Jesus Christ at his word, you went forward, and you've seen that yes, indeed, it is true. Everything that the word has said is true. It is real. It is life. It is the way that God has for us to go. And you've done that. Now, in the process of you doing that, and you've experienced the power and the presence and the purpose of the living God in your own life, well, now as you see God moving and as you see the synergistic relationship between the spirit of what God is doing, the things that God has us to pray about, the things that God has us to do, actions in the natural, and the corresponding effects on this paradigm that we live in, as you see all of that taking place, have you noticed how things are lining up? Have you noticed how things are being exposed, how things are being brought into the light? Have you noticed how the covers are being ripped off of all of these things that once remained hidden, that now are being brought into the forefront, that now are just being brought out onto center stage, and everybody is having to look at it? Have you noticed how the world, in and of itself, is saying continually that the emperor has a beautiful set of clothes on, when the emperor is in fact naked? Have you seen that? Have you noticed that? Have you noticed how they can say good is bad and bad is good? Have you noticed the hypocrisy and the contradiction? Have you noticed how if they could have their way, they would legislate every form of evil possible? And they're pushing for that, by the way. Um, <clears throat> I saw a news article the other day. Uh, I just saw it on one, so, one place, so I need to uh, verify this a bit more but how in France they have removed the age of consent for sexual activity. So meaning, um, if that article was correct, the one that I read, that children are now free game. You know, they're, they're open season on kids in France. If they have can show that they've given some form of consent. I mean, this this is sickness, people. This is, um, this is legislating evil. This is a nation that is not protecting its children. This is, and they're, they're citing examples like from ancient Greece of how things used to... It, listen, societies move forward. You're going backwards but alas you know this is this is a uh, part of of the paradigm of what we're in the middle of what the world is looking to try to do to try to bring forward because the way the world works is if it can legislate it if it then there's no justice in the system for evils that are contrary to the truth, the word, natural law. You know, there, there is natural law. You know, there are things that are higher than the laws of man. <clears throat> See, okay, if you, say, say you work for a company, right? Okay, you work for a company and the company tells you the laws of their company, the laws of their corporation, is that you work for 22 hours a day, every day. There is no breaks. You can't go to the bathroom. You know, whatever. They can make whatever laws that they want to. But in the process of them making their laws, there are is that law that they create, is there a higher law that governs their law? Jason, is there, is there a higher law that governs their law? 
is the law that they would create subservient to another law? And, you know, one of the things that, that people that people struggle with sometimes is that they, they think that, okay, if you just create, if you just become a law unto yourself, well, you can do that, but you can do that to your own hurt. If you legislate and you say that gravity, you know, you can tell people, okay, it's, it's illegal, you know, gravity now, gro- this, the law, it, it's, it's, there is no gravity, you won't, if you, if you go off a building, you know, you don't go straight down. If you, you know, okay, well, you can legislate whatever you want to, but there are natural laws in place that govern our physical, our physical paradigm that will continue to operate and be in effect whether you legislate it or not, whether you like it or not, whether you even know about it or not. Those are going to be there. So now, <clears throat> when, when God gave, so for example, when God gave the children of Israel the laws through Moses in the book of Exodus, he was giving them also a way to live so that they would not die a way to exist so that they would not be destroyed like the nations that were around them that God was also sending them in to destroy and and that God had turned against, that had filled up their cup with evil. And slowly by slowly, He was sending them in to, to take them out of the land, for it to be given to the people that were destined by God's design to have that place. Now, When he gave them a, a structure and a way to do things, it was so that they could live. But they had to make a choice. But God, when he gave them the law, he gave them something that was in line with kingdom principles, in line with truth, in line with life. See, Jesus Christ was the fulfillment of the law. But for Christ, who was, who is life, for him to be the fulfillment of it, as he just did the things that he saw the Father doing, he naturally fulfilled the law of life. So when God would give people some instructions, he would give them something that would help them and would would lead to life. So when God would say, you know, to don't, that you know you, when he when he says not to steal you know not to lie well because think about it, think of, think think of every think of a society where nobody would steal what kind of a society that would be just that just that one think of a society where people told the truth and you knew that the words that people said out of their mouths were real and were true and were honest and were, were, were a reflection of what was real. Can you imagine if just those two were in operation, how different any society would be? If you knew that the people that were around you would never steal from you and would never lie to you? I mean, leave everything else as is. But just add those two pieces in. Can you see how much better of a world that would be? But when people don't, now imagine a place where everybody lies and everybody steals. Well, you don't know left from right. You don't know if somebody's telling you that you don't know what anybody's telling you at any point in time. Most people's words are meaningless because there's nothing behind them. And you don't know if somebody's going to take whatever it is that you have or whatever's behind you. So there's no stability. There's no consistency. There's no continuity. Something like that, a situation like that, if people did the fulfillment, the fullness of one or the other, see what it does to a society. See what it does to a place. Just take it out to LD50. (laughs) There's a... Oh, I'm trying to remember this. It's a test that they do with pharmaceutical drugs. And um, lethal dose 50. I don't know why I remember that. 
But, um, you know, most, most things in the pharmaceutical world, if you take 50 of them, they'll kill you. So, 50 or less. But, um, yeah, a lot of things in the world of nature, you know, they're not toxic at any level. But synthetic, man-made, yeah, you got to be careful. Um, so, yeah, but if you take something out to its extreme, take something out to its extreme and see what it is, see what it does, see what the results for what the ramifications are for doing something a particular way. See what the ramifications are. You know, I, I had a pastor one time who's, he was talking about something Martin Luther had said, and he had said, if you're going to sin, sin boldly. If you're going to sin, sin boldly. And the point that he was trying to make when he was talking to me and relaying those words of, of Luther were, um, the reason that he said something like that was, if you just go to the full extreme, you go full on, you're going to see the horror of what you've signed up to. But if you just do like a little bit here, a little bit there, you'll probably carry on in it for a long time. You don't realize it's destroying you and eating away at you. So, as the world has gone full bore into depravity, as God has given people over to a corrupt mind and a depraved, uh, a depraved mind, a, a corrupt existence, you're also seeing them destroying even themselves. You're also seeing them destroying everything around them. They're, they've, they're coming unhinged. Um, one step shy of men's hearts failing them for the things that they see coming upon the earth. That's not too far off because there comes a point where when the cup is full, there's nowhere else to go. See, either, either you, when the cup gets full and God quickens people to it, either people repent and come to God and turn from their wicked ways and are saved by by basically just course correcting and getting on God's page or they continue to go in that and there is nothing left for them but destruction but annihilation but reaping what they've sown you know the book of revelation when people read these bold judgments and vile judgments and all this if you just read those if you see all that's going on around us in the world around us so much of what's there is uh, people reaping what they've sown. I mean, I was reading up a little bit on this Mark of the Beast, uh, and I, I mean, it says, when it talks about everybody that, that took that mark gets afflicted, um, I, I don't know. For me, I read that, and I just it just looks like cellular rejection of a foreign object inside of people's bodies where they put something into their body and then it didn't go so well. So they break out into horrible sores all over their bodies. Now, the scriptures talk about it being a judgment. It's a reaping what people have sown. You, you, listen, God is your source. Not man. God is your so a source. Not the world and not the world system. The living God. He said He would lead you. He said He would guide you. He said He would protect you. He said that He would, as he, by His Spirit, would lead and guide you into all truth. He said, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. All these things, speaking about the needs that you have, will be added unto you. So He's already given this to us. He's already given us the instruction. But the enemy works so hard to snatch it away from you. So hard so hard to take you in another direction to get you to think a lie to get you to go another way but there is a way there's the way that leads to life many are called but the chosen are few why because people don't they just they won't believe they won't trust they just won't take God at his word I mean seriously what have what does what do people have to lose 
have you taken, have you just, just project ahead a little bit with what the world has and what the world offers you. What is it that you're giving up on? You know, even if you gain the whole world, you lose and forfeit your soul. What do you get in return? What can a man give in exchange for his soul? That's what Jesus would ask. But in the end, you know, the propaganda is very strong. And the peer pressure and the pressure to conform is, is all around you. And if you're going to persist, and if you're going to push through, you're going to have to, you're going to, have to see and experience that reality and it's going to have to be it's going to have to be absolutely just solid in you and you have to trust God to do what he said he's going to do in you but you know the world is going as soon as you start it's going to challenge that it's going to push for something else it's going to try to distract you it's going to try to bribe you. <clears throat> the world will happily bribe you off of the path of truth. But in that entire process, if you do take what the world offers you, you're going to be miserable inside. Because you know it. You know that God had something else for you and you just, oh, that shortcut seems so good. It's, it, it's a moment-by-moment moment thing, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's a, it's, you just, you look at it, you bring it before the Father to make your decisions and your choices, and you let Him speak and show you, and then you go with it. Sometimes, this is again, it's back to a relationship. Sometimes you, you just, you know, it doesn't make sense. Something doesn't, you're just not quite sure, you don't know which way to go, but you do it. You know, you trust God and you do it. And in the process of, of going forward with what He shows you, you see the results and you see the fruit and the wisdom of following Him. And do we make mistakes along the way? Yeah, we do. Do we... Um, but here's the thing. If you're choosing life, and you're choosing truth, and you're choosing to follow the way that God has put in front of you, as He has explained it and shown it to you in His Word and leads and guides you by His Spirit, the likelihood of good and positive consequences in your life as a result of following what He shows you to do is very high. You know, yes, sometimes bad things happen to good people, but a lot of really good, amazing things are going to happen to you and in your life because you trusted God and because you trusted His Word. So, yes, some, some difficult things may come up, but mostly what you're going to see and notice is you're going to notice a harvest of righteousness, a harvest of truth, a harvest of good things. You're going to see the, the, um, the response and what comes back to you, what you, you've reaped from what you've sown as you've trusted God. You're going to see it. And I tell you, it's an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing to when you start, when this harvest starts coming in. Because when the harvest that God has had you to plant starts to be manifest in your life, it just, it overtakes you. The blessing of God can overtake you, my, my friends. It, it, can, it can be such a fullness on every side. And you know, I know sometimes people, you know, the way the world thinks is just in terms of finances. I mean, listen, God's not apart from finances, okay? If he's able to raise up Solomon, the richest man that ever lived, then you know he's not he's not apart from finance. And it's interesting that the richest man that ever lived was also the wisest man that ever lived. So you know there is something to be said for that. There is a link and a connection to that. So it's something to keep in mind, something to think about that there is something there. And, you know, if somebody would try to tell you otherwise, they're not being straight. They're not being truthful with you. There is something there. But even more than what you have 
what God does with what you have. When you trust Him with what you have, when you obey Him with what you have, He blesses what's in your care because you've put it before Him. You've consecrated it as unto Him. And God will bless that and do something with it. Something amazing He'll do with it. But it's got to be on His terms. If you don't, if you don't trust Him with it, you know, it's there's then you've kept it separate from Him. And in the world, the treasures of this world, thieves break in and steal, and moth and rust do corrupt and do, do chew it up. So you want to put everything before Him. <clears throat> but God, God has His way. God has His way of raising up His people. God has His way of raising you up as you trust Him. And it is, a, it is, you know, the world is going to challenge that trust. The world is going to um, make it difficult because it wants you to be uh, controlled by them. It wants you to take the bargain. It wants you to take the deal that they offer you. So when you refuse the deal, now you've got a target. And now you've really got to trust. So if you've refused the deal... Well, now the world has been scorned. And hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. You know, when you've refused the world and you've refused the advances of the world, now they, they come after you in the realm of the Spirit and through human agents that participate with demonic and satanic um, forces and spirits that are there. They work with and through human agents, and those that those are those that have that have crossed over. So you've got to deal with those things. You've got to contend with those things. And the way you contend with those things is you stay close to Christ. You walk with Him. You do that which He has for you to do. You trust Him. And there's going to be times where God says, "Look, just lay low," and you lay low. There's going to be times where God says, "Nope, time to speak, time to get involved, time to be active." You know, go forward and trust me and I'm going to take care of you. And you do that. And you see the hand of God. So it's it's not a one-size-fits-all. It's a moment-by-moment moment, trusting the Spirit of the living God, knowing that He has the best for you, knowing that He's going to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all you can ask or think. Yeah. You know, that's what we're in the middle of. So, on a, on a current situation in time, well, you know, if, if you're struggling with where things are at right now, and I think a lot of people are, but well, one is realize that God is with you. And also realize that, you know, you've got the power and the spirit to change everything. And God has put us here in the middle of this because He has a purpose. He has a reason. He has an intention for what we're in the middle of. It's not because, you know, He just wants to see you squirm. No. The enemy will tell you that, but that's not God. The enemy will tell you that that um, that that God doesn't care or that he can't help you or that he doesn't want to help you can you imagine the kind of things that the enemy was trying to whisper into Jesus' ear as he was going to the cross as he was on the cross I mean some of the stuff is recorded that's because it was spoken out loud you know and they recorded those kind of things where people would walk by the cross and say oh this guy saved others he can't you know let's see him save himself I mean, just, just, here's Jesus on the cross giving up his life for the sins of the world. And his people are just throwing insults upon him while he's taking their sins. So that they could be made whole and they could have a way to the Father. And in the middle of that, they're spitting on him. In the middle of that, they're beating him. In the middle of that, they're torturing him. The anguish that you felt in that entire situation. And the enemy throwing everything he's got at him. 
to try to dissuade him, to try to pull him off course, to try to get him to just don't go through with it, Jesus. But Jesus went through all the way to the close. So he was able to say, it is finished. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you and I, we want to be able to say when we're done with our time on the earth, we want to be able to say it is finished. It is concluded. It is the reason that you are here. It is complete. And you can go on in the fullness of, the, of what God has for you because it's done. There's nothing left. You did your role. You did it beautifully. And how did you do it? Well, what did Jesus do? I only do the things I see the Father doing. I only speak the words I hear of the Father. So that's how you do it. And take up your cross daily, which means it's not a crazy or sadistic thing. It just means, okay, God, your way, not mine, every day. That's all it means. You know, all it means is, you, God, your way, not mine. You know, dying to yourself. People have made this all, oh gosh, they made it so crazy and so twisted and so convoluted. It's none of that. Dying to yourself just means, okay, God, your way, not mine. Simple. Okay, God, your way, not mine. That's it. That's all it is. Every moment of every day. And in that, there's, there's freedom. In that, there's peace. If you're struggling with your peace, just check that. Because there's peace in that state. Because he's the Prince of Peace. There's peace in that state. And yeah, we are under attack as well. That, and there is that attack of the enemy that comes, which, you know, it will disrupt your peace and it will. But, you know, it's, it's, it passes. It passes. <clears throat> you, you shift locations, you change a couple things, it passes. As you just trust God and you move forward a little bit, it passes. You wait a little time, it passes. So, you know, God is, God is doing some amazing things with His people. And, uh, you know, it's a great time to be in prayer. Because as we spend time in prayer, as we trust God, as we learn more and more to flow with Him in prayer, amazing things are happening. As God is just in a very, I, I mean, it's just an incredible way He's answering the prayers of His people. He leads us to pray in line with the Spirit. And as we pray and we bridge from the spiritual to the natural, God brings the answers that are one in the Spirit and one in the Spirit realm into the natural. God, I mean, it's incredible, guys. This is the way we want to live. So, but the day-to-day, -day, this is something that, too, we've got to also master. You know, we've got to master the way that we do that in this time. Because, you know, the world is not going to do that for you. Because the world has a different set of priorities and a different focus. So you have to allow God to quicken you and show you how to master your way of being here in your time on the earth. You want to master it because if you can master you can you you can optimize your time you can optimize this window that you're on this planet in this life doing the things the father has for you to do if you if you leave it up to the enemy he's going to have you scattered all over the place you know, I, i've just seen that time and again you know somebody will will start moving with what god has for them to do and the enemy will just scatter them. Just send all kinds of things right away to try to get them off that track. To break their resolve. To get them distracted. To, to make them forget the very thing that God just showed you. That incredible word that God just showed you. The enemy is going to try to take all of that away from you. So, you know, learning some mastery is important. And you're going to learn that as you just continue to persist. Listen, go with what you already know. Go with what God's already showed you. 
If he showed you something, and I know he showed every single one of you things, the part that he showed you, that's the part. Just go with that. Go with what you know is God. Because he is I am. He is truth. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And there is peace and life and hope and joy and fullness of being in him. But you got to go with him. You've got to go with him. If you, if you resist, you resist to your own hurt. If you flow with him, you flow with him to your own benefit, to your own fulfillment, to your own joy, to your own elation. If you flow with him, you're flowing with life. And you're flowing with God the way that he works on the earth. Not the way that man works, but the way that God works. You know, the world is going to keep coming apart more and more and more. And I want you to be I don't want you to be um, okay mm, the house of Israel mm-hmm. and let me tell y'all Gentile something. You don't have to be an Israelite to receive the blessings of Yah. If you understand who the true chosen children are and you support that, the Most High will bless you tremendously. He did it with Cornelius. He did it with so many others before us and before you that you receive your blessings, man. Just because you're a Gentile, that don't mean white. That means all different ethnicities. They understand what's going on. They understand truth. You are going to be blessed tremendously. You understand what I'm telling you, right? So what I'm wondering, I want you to understand something here. That's only going to be a small percentage of Gentiles that make it. Why don't you be a part of that rim and be a part of the Hebrew culture of the one third? Because the most high getting ready to rain blessings. And you're going to be right there with us. But we can no longer keep trying to uplift the two thirds because they're going to bring us down. And that's what Satan knows. Now, I'm not saying that to say this. When a young man get out there and he's flipping and flopping, hold him. You ain't got to take care of him, but just hold him until some help come his way. That's all you got to do. Don't be foolish and record his, his t- demise. The most high can't stand a black man that make fun of another black man that's having trouble. 